What up guys, Joachim here, and in this video I am going to show you kind of this free uh, resource that's on the Orthodox West um, website, and it's kind of a prayer book or the English office, daily morning and evening prayer according to the Orthodox Revised Book of Common Prayer form. And uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, you can go, they have uh, videos on the monastic office, which is coming soon, but, um, and then they have some videos you can go uh, see that go along with that. Um, you know, that's at the Orthodox West website. And yeah, so you can actually purchase these things. But if you go up here, um, where's it at? So the English office is available. You can click on today's service, I think is what you uh, click for that. And it will take you to uh, today's office for a morning and evening prayer. Just give that a second to load. Uh, my family has actually been doing these uh, for a few weeks now. I, I think it's pretty good. Uh, my daughters like it mostly just because they actually have their own resource on their phone and can follow along. Um, but you can see it follows the standard form of uh, what you would see in the Book of Common Prayer. And uh, it will give you the, the date, and, and that is for that. So um, Western Rite Orthodox Daily Office for 3-7-23, which um, that's today's date. So, you know, it kind of updates every day. You can't go back to old uh, days, but um, it, it updates, like, the readings and things that would be done for that day. You can see it follows the typical office um, that would be said as kind of like a service. So at least in, in my house, I, I give the parts that uh, typically the leader would give. Or um, if you're in a church, it would be the priest. Of course, O oh Lord, open thou our lips. And then uh, my wife and my daughters and my son, if he were there, uh, he's, you know, not, he doesn't live at home anymore. But, um, you know, they would respond, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise, and et cetera, et cetera. And once we get through that, we get to the Psalms, and I, I usually let my um, daughters and my wife sit for, for that until um, we skip the readings in the morning, like the readings that are done um, from Scripture. Uh, you get uh, scripture readings, uh, the lesson here begin at the 28th verse of the 24th chapter of Genesis. These are uh, things that are typically read in any, any, any um, you know, church that still uses lectionary, the old uh, lectionary that developed in the early centuries of the church, um, which would typically be like the Catholic, Orthodox, or in this case, Anglican um, rules that are followed. Um, the Orthodox Church follows these as well. Of course, this is the Orthodox West. Um, but uh, not all of these are, are the same, but uh, there's a lot more Old Testament readings that occur from the Book of Common Prayer, and, and I like that. I like that there's more scripture readings. So we'll skip these, though, in the morning, and then we'll do all four readings in the evening. Uh, we're usually crunched for time in the morning, so we just kind of move some of the readings to the e evening for that reason. But uh, then they have these canticles that come up, the Song of Tobit. Uh, this is actually what we did this morning. And uh, it changes liturgically throughout the year. The only thing I typically add to it is after we say the Our Father prayer, we do an angelic salutation or the Hail Mary prayer. Um, in, in the East, it's called the angelic salutation, since most of you are probably more familiar with Eastern Rite prayers, I imagine. I, I don't know, but... Um, you know, if you come from a Western background, you might call it the, the Hail Mary. Um, but following this, we'll say the Hail Mary prayer. A Hail Mary full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. And then we can't we move on. Um, there's a, you know, there's actually two uh, prayers. There's a, the Old Testament reading. And I think, there's, is it a gospel reading or uh, an epistle um, yeah, it's an epistle reading, so that's in the morning, and then in the evening you'll have a, another Old Testament reading along with a gospel reading, so the evening prayers. And again, these do change every day, so it'll, it'll update with uh, that day, but that is all available at the um, Western Orthodox um, Orthodox West website. Uh, you can see this one has an Old Testament reading from the prophet Jeremiah. and So it looks like it's like one from like the, the um, Pentateuch, uh, reading per day, one from a prophet, and then uh, one reading from an epistle and one from a gospel, and they kind of separate them out in the mornings and in the evenings. And then uh, you also have the Psalms, of course, which are, makes up the majority of it. But then I, I like these canticles that we, we see less of, I think, in, in the Eastern traditions. Um, the canticles, the Song of Mary, or the Magnificat, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. 
and uh, the other, oh, the Apostles' Creed. That's kind of like a abridged version of the Nicene Constantinopolitan Creed. Uh, so it's pretty cool when they add that. I, I like that one. Um, so, yeah, you get all these collects for peace. Um, and these are said during Lent. So you can see kind of Lent there after the appointed day until Palm Sunday on Palm Sunday. Um, it changes, I believe. So, yeah, um, you know, that's kind of a free thing that's on the website there. Pretty cool. A good thing to be aware of. The English office is there. And then, of course, you can also get, uh, you can pay for versions. There's the purchased uh, ebook, and then there's paper, paperback versions, which you can follow along with. And then, of course, these things are also just, if you get the, um, the uh, Book of Common Prayer from the Antiochian, uh, archdiocese, uh, they actually have like a, a red um, prayer book. It has the Coverdale Psalter in it, along with uh, several different versions for family prayer that uh, I've used in the past, which are, are really good. So we, we almost, you know, we change periodically throughout the se season on uh, different rites and things. And I don't know, I just, I kind of like the Eastern rite and the Western rite. I, I don't really have a, a preference. Um, but I, I think there's definitely things to uh, to learn from both of them, and, and so I, I like using them. But you can see uh, this is the according to the calendar and use of the Western Rite Vicarate and the Antiochian Orthodox Archdiocese in North America. Um, this calendar, you'll you'll see the same thing if you go to a um, Rocor, the Rocor Western Rite calendar. Um, uh, somebody kind of argued with me a few weeks ago that no rural core church uses, uh, celebrates uh, Palm Sunday, or oh, no, I'm sorry, not Palm Sunday, uh, that they don't celebrate Ash Wednesday. And so I, I went to the, the rural core website and tried to show them, and the person just kept arguing. I don't know, I, I've kind of done arguing with people. Um, you know, once I've showed you exactly, like, no, you're wrong, it's right on their on their calendar. It's, it's you know, part of the rural core website. You're you're mistaken, and they're like, oh, no, I'm part of the glory of the something. Like, oh, okay, the, thanks for your input. I'm, I'm just, I blocked the person. And so, you know, whatever. So, um, yeah, you, you kind of get that. This is YouTube. You have a, have a lot of that. So, um, yeah, lots of materials, lots of resources to access here. Um, the Both the Rural Corps and the Antiochian um, Western Rite stuff is, is really good if you're into the Western Rite or you're interested in that. Um, I think I've seen people like that kind of characterize the Western Rite as being a way to transition to the Eastern Rite. And just a one quick note on that before I uh, stop this video, but um, in some cases, I think that that's, that's true. Um, people will come into the Orthodox Church uh, through the Western Rite, and it is a, those resources are a way to help them transition into um, Eastern Rite churches in, in the Orthodox Church. But I don't think it has to be that way. Um, and, and why would it? Um, the, the West was Orthodox for a thousand years. Um, there were times when the East went into heresy, and, and the West preserved the faith. And then there were times, uh, you know, in more recent centuries, uh, especially since the schism, that uh, we would say the West has gone into, or, or the, at least the Catholic Church has gone into heresy and, and teaching heresy, and, and that uh, it is the Eastern Church that preserves this. But um, the, the Church is the Church, whether it's in the East or the West. Um, the, these prayers, the, the forms of, of prayer, the liturgy, um, it's not the liturgies that have preserved any of these, because the, the liturgy of St. John Chrysostom, um, it, it was what was celebrated when the East was going into iconoclasm. So, you know, you, you can't really say that the liturgies or the prayers or any of those things preserved uh, the church. They, they do. They preserve the church, but uh, they don't prevent the church from going into heresy, I guess is a better way to say that because, you know, these prayers and, and being part of this people, it, they do actually preserve the church. That's not correct what I said. Uh, it, it would be more accurate to say that they don't prevent some people from going into heresies. And some of those people actually end up being the, the ones in charge. So um, that means later generations have to repent. And and so it, it's still the church, whether it's being led astray or, or not, though, it, it is the church. Um, so 
you know, we, we um, you know, have these saints, uh, the, the saints that produce these prayers. They're still canonized saints in the Eastern Rite Orthodox Church. Uh, saint um, Gregory the Great, we're celebrating uh, the liturgy of the pre-sanctified gifts on Wednesdays and a couple Fridays throughout Lent right now. And that, that is by uh, a Western saint. He, he would have been more familiar with uh, this style that we see in the Orthodox West uh, site here, but uh, we're celebrating his liturgy in the Eastern Church because it's part of our tradition. It, it became to be. The, the Gregorian style chant uh, was um, kind of named after him at least. So, um, you know, I, I don't think these things need to be a transition, but I, I guess in my opinion, uh, the, the way that I see this kind of unfolding seems to be that uh, the Western right will probably influence the Eastern right and, and eventually, at least in Western countries like America, Great Britain, um, Australia, you know, in countries that are founded upon Western culture will in time eventually um, probably come to some medium point where they, they have Western influences and Eastern influences, but they're, they're probably their own unique um, thing outside of either of those. So I don't know. We'll see how it unfolds. Uh, get back with me in a couple centuries and, and we'll see what things look like. But, uh, you know, right now we live in this time and this is what it is. So uh, you guys take it easy. Hopefully you find these things beneficial and edifying and uh, they, they point you towards a resource that you might um, draw spiritual um, inspiration from, knowledge, discernment, and, and wisdom and the prayers of the saints and, and of the church. So you guys take it easy and I'll talk to you in a video coming soon.